How's it going guys? Taylor here. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update. It's been a little bit since we brought a YouTube video out, but there's a good reason for that. I have been really, really busy putting a 70 Roadrunner together. And as you can see, we've built it out to resemble a Superbird. So I'm going to give you a little walk around and show you some of what we've done to this thing. It's um, quite the car. This trunk lid here had my good buddy at Dirty Diesel fix the whole back lip here. It, uh, it was all rusted out and that is the one piece for this thing that AMD or anybody else absolutely does not make. There's not a aftermarket piece available for that deck lid at all. The taillights here, they are not Roadrunner as many of you will see. Um, they are satellite taillights, but the difference in that versus Roadrunner taillights was about 350 bucks. Those were 30 and Roadrunners are about 400. So that was the reason for that. There's obviously no rear bumper on it. That will be coming soon. There's no quarter extensions, which is why it looks like there's a huge gap between the bumper or the uh, deck lid and the quarter panels. That's gonna be coming soon. That's probably my least favorite thing about the car right now, um, but it'll be fixed sooner than later. Obviously there is a giant wing here. Um, one of my favorite parts of the car. Really, really cool. Um, that is from a place out in Texas that also did the nose, the front fenders, the lower valence and the hood. But um, decided not to do the um, Superbird rear window there. That is the factory Roadrunner one because I don't really care that much. It, um, it looks fine to me. The rear window turned out a little bit weird. There's a gap right here that I'd like to fix, but it doesn't leak. And that was uh, first and foremost deal. So these are some stickers that my buddy James Royston sorted out for me, made it look kind of like the, uh, old Plymouth Superbird logo on the wing, which is pretty cool. Traveler wrote that on there. That's the car's name. Um, but I'm going to kind of stand back so you can get a real view of what it looks like that is uh man i love that car so that's this here is what has become affectionately known as my Tador list as you've seen on several of my other builds if you uh, you just write your to-do list on the car you can't lose it so most of the stuff's marked out there's a few things still that i'd like to get better exhaust is one of those things just took this thing on a 1350 mile road trip and it is not that loud sitting here idling, but it's really, really loud at uh, 4,000 RPM driving down the road. So I want to get that fixed immediately, if not sooner. That is the nose. Actually ends up fitting pretty good. Front fenders and hood. It all needs a little adjustment, but nothing my buddy Corey Cox can't help me with. We ended up cutting some Lexan out to uh, use as headlights or headlight covers. Headlights are just little $20 deals from Summit Racing. Um, I actually ended up really putting out some super good light. So I'll show you a little bit of what's under the hood next. So that is a 5.7 Gen 3 Hemi. Uh, nothing special about it at all. We're definitely going to have to hook it up with some stuff from comp, get a new cam and some, you know, go fast parts on there maybe, but, uh, you know, maybe 350 horsepower, just a, just a 5.7. I think they're supposed to be rated at 345 cubic inches. If I'm wrong, somebody please correct me by all means. Um, yeah, that's the, the latch tray actually harvested the radiator out of Stonewall, the old one before we put the cup motor in, um, that alternator right there. Anybody that's doing a gen three Hemi swap, bushel on performance sells it as a one wire alternator and i'm pretty sure it's the only one that is available for a gen 3 hemi obviously we got the fast throttle body on it for those of you looking at the brakes we got manual brakes on it it does have a proportioning valve there um get a little bit less brake pressure to the rear so the back end doesn't step out but uh yeah brakes are really good something we really struggled with the brake company that we bought the brakes from ended up selling us two passenger side calipers. So I spent like three days trying to get the brakes to bleed and wouldn't do it, but that ended up being the problem. Had to pull it off the car to be able to bleed it and now it's done. Moving on around the car, we'll 
check out this luxurious interior. That was an old uh, sticker from the quarter or the uh, quarter window. GT1. Can't really tell what the middle part says, but pretty cool little sticker. I didn't want to take off. So, cool thing about this thing, it's got three pedals in it. It's a nice Wildwood setup there, and it's got a TR6060 out of like a 2015 Challenger. So that worked out really well. Um, just got an arc panel, real basic. And the seats are really nice. Um, they're actually more comfortable than they look, but they are out of Tim Davis, Jacob's dad. Uh, he found them at one of his rental properties under a shed or something and allowed us to use them for just a little while. Unfortunately, as we've sat on them, they started to rip, but you know, casualties of sitting in seats have been sitting outside for a long time, unfortunately. So back to that TR6060. You can probably tell that is not a factory trans tunnel for a 70 road runner. I've had to cut all along here, all along here to be able to fit that really tall transmission. I also had to brace, you can see a tube right there. I had to cut the factory cross member out of the car that supports the torsion bar suspension because we do still have torsion bar suspension in this car. It's got all new uh, bushings and ball joints and all that. Jacob Davis sorted that out for us when he had the car. It was, uh, or I say he had the car. He had the other three cars that ended up making this one car. But got a long way to go on the interior. I did seam seal everything again. And that is like chassis, or POR15, not chassis shield. POR15 from Summit. Still got my old spare tire back there right now but very basic very minimalistic interior that needs uh, a lot more love upcoming soon this is the steering wheel out of stonewall probably not the one i want to run forever maybe get a nice omp steering wheel in there eventually and get some good omp belts because those are uh really old these are these belts are like 10 years old 12 years old something like that so in the trunk pretty messy right now but uh it's just that fuel cell we got 22 gallon fuel cell feeding down to a fast pump um got a spare one wired up next to it got the battery in the back a few extra things left over from the little road trip we just did but pretty spacious trunk overall and the rear end we've got a ride tech four link kit under there and factory eight and three quarter housing factory axles um does have disc brakes all the way around um really really happy with how this thing has turned out overall obviously we've got liquid molly flowing through the veins and uh need to get some yellow speed coolers on it to really get the stance right right now it's sitting a little back down got to get that thing up and uh and really make it happy but this has been a dream car of mine for a really long time and really couldn't be happier with it well if you like this video consider commenting subscribing liking um we're gonna be doing some more of these just reviewing some of the cars i've got maybe some of the cars i've had in my past it's uh, a lot of fun to reminisce on some of those old memories and we'll just leave you with a little shot of it uh turning on and maybe we'll see what it'll do I'll leave you with that. If there's anything about this car you'd like to know more about, see it out driving, let us know in the comments. And uh, I'm sure this is not the last time you'll see this car on the channel.